Hi, I'm Lisa Goodrich. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Neurobiology at Harvard Medical School. My lab's interested in molecular mechanisms of neural development. How do neurons know who they are? How do they make the connections that they need to communicate information? And how do they acquire their specific morphologies, morphologies they need to conduct their unique functions in the brain? We studied this question in a couple of different sensory systems, and today I'd like to tell you about our work uh, looking at cell morphology in the retina, work that's published in this issue of neurons. In this study, we asked how neurons determine how many neurites to extend. Neurite number varies widely in neurons with different functions, with some extending one dendrite, others becoming bipolar, and others elaborating multiple processes. To understand how neurons develop a specific number of processes, we focus on the population of neurons in the retina. Cells in the retina are organized into three nuclear layers, the outer nuclear layer, the inner nuclear layer, and the ganglion cell layer. Neurons form connections with each other that are restricted to synaptic layers, called the outer plexiform layer and the inner plexiform layer. Today, we'll focus on a population of inner neurons called the amacrine cells, which sit in the inner nuclear layer. Amacrine cells were interesting to us because of their unipolar morphology, extending a single apical dendrite into the IPL, pointing towards the ganglion cell layer. This made us wonder whether dendrite number and orientation are coordinated with the surrounding tissue by signal that's received upon reaching the IPL. And this was a question that a postdoc in the lab, Michael Deans, decided to take on. Hello, my name is Michael Deans, and I'm the lead author on this study. This was a project that started during my postdoc here at the Goodrich lab, and has continued in my own laboratory at Johns Hopkins University. What I'd like to do is start by telling you a little bit about amacrine cell development. Amacrine cell precursors first appear at the top of the neuroblastic layer, and at this stage they're multipolar, extending four or more neurites. As these precursors migrate towards the inner plexiform layer, they gradually lose these processes. We often see a bipolar morphology as the cells have contacted the boundary between the inner nuclear layer and the inner plexiform layer. The mature amacrine cell extends a single primary dendrite that stratifies within the inner plexiform layer. The next challenge was to identify the molecular mechanisms underlying this change in amacrine cell morphology. What was remarkable was that the amacrine cells retracted that last trailing process right when they met the border of the inner plexiform layer. So we reasoned that the signal triggering this process was something that resided within the IPL. The atypical cadherin FAT3 was a really nice candidate. FAT3 is an enormous molecule with 34 cadherin repeats and EGF and lanolin repeats in its extracellular domain. We took a number of approaches to test whether FAT3 might be a receptor acting in amacrine cells to control dendrite number. One of the most striking findings was the morphology of amacrine cells in the retinas from FAT3 mutant mice. As we've seen, amacrine cells generally assume a unipolar morphology. However, in the FAT3 mutant retina, Amacrine cells frequently extend an extra neurite that points away from the inner plexiform layer and towards the outer nuclear layer. When we looked in the mature retina, we saw that these neurites are actually able to go on to form new dendritic arbors. This is true both for amacrine cells located in the inner nuclear layer and amacrine cells that are displaced in the ganglion cell layers. Moreover, these arbors establish new synaptic connections that form two additional plexiform layers, visualized here by standing for the synaptic marker VGAP. One synaptic layer interrupts the internuclear layer, and the second forms underneath the ganglion cell layer at the innermost boundary of the retina. One exciting aspect of the FAT3 mutant phenotype is the emergence of these two ectopic plexiform layers, because it suggests that even minor changes in retinal development can have fundamental effects on retinal wiring. We also show that there's a unique migration phenotype that affects specific classes of amacrine cells. But what we didn't find, and this is quite surprising, are classical planar cell polarity defects, which you might have expected based upon the role of fat coherence in flies. But in fact, FAT3 is much more closely related to the fat-like branch of the fat coherence, and this is a branch we don't know very much about. Our results suggest that FAT3 and likely other fat-like molecules are doing something very interesting. Uh, understanding how these molecules do those functions is a question for the future and something we're looking forward to figuring.